<clears throat> now, the book only consists of eight chapters, so it discusses the political, social, economical aspect of the colon colonial country. So, uh, this is how important this book is. Now, it not only discusses uh, his observation, but also there's a, some political, social, and economical aspect to it. Basically, it's a documentary research now, uh, and this is a picture of Antonio Morga here. He's a Spanish lawyer. So if you are not familiar or if you're not aware, uh, our country was named after, honored after King Philip II. So thus, we were called La Isla Filipinas, the islands of Philippe or King Philip and then eventually uh, morphed into Philippines because of the identity Filipino. So so the, the entire country was named after King Philip II, which personally I don't like because King Philip II was a very inept and incapable king. So what is successful? Events happening occur or the uh, occurrence so it's a work of an honest observer, bureaucrat, who knew the workings of the administration from the inside out. So this is actually a very important document. But in annotating the book, what was Rizal's objective? So it, we go to Rizal's objective. So Rizal's objectives, number one, to awaken the consciousness of the Filipinos regarding the glorious, glorious the emphasis on glorious ways of the past, to correct what has been distorted about the Philippines due to Spanish conquest. Again, the, the, the general bias about how uncivilized we were before the Spaniards came. To prove that the Filipinos were civilized even before the coming of the Spaniards. Now, this may look simple, but very in a gigantic. Uh, the task is very enormous because you're talking about rediscovering an entire people, a community, or an entire country, a whole, a whole archipelago's background of their past. Now, what were they before they were uh, converted into the Spanish civilization? So it's no easy task, I'm telling you. So uh, we will be discussing Blumenthal's influence on Rizal. Now, Ferdinand Blumenthal is this well-known uh, Austrian anthropologist who who was who became a really good friend of Sir Rizal, and have always encouraged Sir Rizal to write about the Philippines pre-colonial history because they they knew that nobody was writing about it. So, on the first objective, Rizal strove to establish that the Filipinos could be proud of their pre-conquest past. Because the idea is we were conquered, and we were defeated, and then, which gives you an idea that, uh, what, what, who were our ancestors back then? Why, why, why did they just accept it, no? Defeat. So Rizal strove to establish that the Filipinos could be proud of their pre-conquered past, now the original Filipino identity, if there was one. <clears throat> so the second objective, history as a propaganda weapon. Yes, uh, this is where you must be really wary about or very vigilant about. Because history class can is always had and has always been used as a propaganda weapon. Whoever writes history, or it may look at history as history, but it's not actually so it's fake history. But the idea here is 
it is it can be used as a propaganda weapon to to push through a certain agenda to push through a certain political intention to to advertise uh certain political officials or or even even distort history just to fit in now uh, they're their grand scheme of things so you must be aware of that uh, and you must be very vigilant and very as a as a student of history you must be very careful now of of really digesting uh certain historical facts that comes out there so what did Rizal discover? So I want you to read the article I gave you, no? the one uh, written by Ameto Campo, Rotten Beef, Rotten Stinking Beef, I forgot the title. I posted it on FB group. <clears throat> so what is, did, did Rizal discover? So Rizal discovered that uh, back then our forefathers in the pre Philippines already possessed a working and judicial legislative system. Working because although it was there was no written law or constitution like what we have now in our modern politics, uh, it was working because it, it functioned very well for them. Now, and uh, it may be what we call as primitive in our modern sense, but nonetheless, it's for them it was justice, uh, justice needed and justice served. And, and you will encounter this one on a more detail in in your history readings in Philippine history or Jack 105. Uh, for example, we have a trial by uh ordeal meaning uh, uh you you in order to prove your innocence or guilt you have to go to a certain ordeal or certain task you have to finish in order for you to be exonerated or be removed of the accusation so another is the spanish missionaries I result somehow discovered that there was already a writing system back then. And, and although this is really questionable because we only have a few uh sa mulapa sa kamot ang evidences that we have of our writing system. One famous is the one written in in a copper plate found in Laguna, the other is in a pot burial jar and then one in bamboo <laughs> because when you speak of a writing system it should be everywhere now it should be on the walls it should be on there should be lots of writings documents using that system found but there are there were accusations that the spaniards have actually burned all of them destroyed all of them but uh, but then again we are still trying to ascertain that one um, but nonetheless, there there are evidences of our writing system, and we call them we call it by buy-in, or what would be famously called as alibata. It's phonetic, and it's written in script. So look at here now, at the the left side. It's very similar to Indonesians and in the Indian Sanskrit. So we we used to write in script. If you adhere to the fact to the discovery that we have a writing system then we we actually write in scripts when the spaniards came we now write in alphabet and yes you must know that we are the only one in asia with your we are the only people in asia who writes in alphabet so this result discovered a lot of things that we all actually have early artillery uh our ancestors were proficient in the art of war you can wield swords and they're actually fire guns and cannons or the famously called lantaka it was believed that gunpowders were bought from the chinese 
because yes, we had early contacts with the Chinese traders back then, even before the Spaniards came. We have early contacts also with the Arab traders, Southeast Asian neighbors, and that is where <coughs> historians believe where, where we got gunpowder because when the Spaniards arrived, for example, in the case of Ligaspi, going to Manila to defeat Raja Sulaiman, they were uh, they were welcomed with the Lantaka cannons. This is although Gagmayra ni sila, but nonetheless very potent the weapon. And <clears throat> so we had smooth foreign relations. Again, I suppose you know we, we had contacts outside even before the Spaniards came and as far away as the Middle East. And this is where historians believe Islam in the 13th century was widespread or uh, was have arrived through our contacts with traders from Middle East. And uh, this had also believed that we were self-sufficient back then or uh, economically we were sustainable in terms of food uh, uh we, we all know that the philippines is actually a resource rich country and and you only need to go out just to see that so um farming agriculture uh maritime economy that was the 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 kind of things that the uh, our ancestors have been doing and they were self-sufficient there were there were there were no major trades uh aside from the sultanates who were trading back then but the rest of the entire archipelago uh, there was no strong trading aside from barter trading uh farming was limited only to the barangay and there was no what we call now as hacienda farming uh crash cash crop large-scale plantations there, there was no concept of that yet back then they were planting what they needed and makes them self-sufficient but it's like an economy nonetheless and also rizal theorized that we actually had a, an advanced civilization uh, although people may vary in their definitions of what a civilization is and you only need to make a comparative uh, study on that on certain civilizations like the Aztecs and the Mayans who are not incontestably accepted as civilized uh, communities uh, in here, not result theorize that we had an advanced civilization based on the uh, complex working society and culture with works of arts and literature. Yes, we were, it was very replete, it was very all over the archipelago, the, the, the culture and the arts of the Filipinos. We were, we were very uh, expressive in a lot of ways, now in our clothing, in our art, artworks. Uh, and this to Serizal is symptomatic of an advanced uh, civilization. It's how come we, we, we created this complex working society where we have a hierarchy of, of people and society are uh, is based on jobs and there is a hierarchy of workforce also and kind of social relations entailed in that. So result believe that we actually had an advanced civilization because of that huh? so you, you see that uh the whole objective of Mosea Rizal is very clear now he really wanted to really uh discover which at that time no one really bothered what was the past of the filipinos now so uh important points is that this one i already discussed them 
So this is how Rizal annotated Morga's book. Now Morga again, if if you read them, I will give you some sections of Morga's book. And the way he described is very negative now in a very simple simple sense negatively. So one one sentence for example is he described the Philippines as deserted, inhabitable. But Rizal said that the Philippines was not deserted and was actually habitable. And it's very clear that there were a lot of Barangani communities around. Uh, beef and fish, they know it best when it started to rot and stink. So this is a biased, really biased opinion because uh, they don't know of our culinary uh culture back then and his and fish that begun, begins to rot is actually what we uh what we call as ginamos or uh bagoong diba? to the spanish eyes it's actually rotten fish and it's inedible and for them it's a big big no no yak na sila and they think that why why do people eat that but in, in our culture we, we eat the ginamos so uh results said that spaniards like any other nation treat food to which they are not accustomed or is unknown to them with disgust diba? same way when the spaniards introduce uh cheese to the cebuanos the cebuanos laughed at them because why would they drink milk if the 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 Filipinos back then were eating the entire carabao or the entire cow? Diba? So it's all about uh, great writing your observations and interpreting them based upon your culture. So upon reading results, uh, upon reading Morga's book and annotated it. So Rizal came up with three propositions. Excuse me, mag I mag taal sa home charger. Hello. hello hello so the three propositions <clears throat> that he believes that the people of the philippines have a culture of their own before the coming of the spaniards the filipinos were decimated demor demoralized exploited and ruined by the spanish colonization a huge accusation but it, it is well justified also the present state of the philippines was not ne necessarily superior to its past because the idea here that we were uncivilized and the spaniards have civilized that as then the 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 people uh in spanish colonization upwards onwards are are more superior than the, their past no it's all about perspectives now one can see indigenous communities as uncivilized but for the indigenous communities they are not no? and they, they don't even care so uh, <clears throat> empathy and uh, open-mindedness is needed uh, in, in in studies like this or in anthropology or archaeology you have to really and put yourself in the shoes of the culture and the society of the of the community you are studying and do not include your biases in there
so uh, we all know this one. So for the result to foretell the destiny of a nation, it is not necessary to open the book that tells her over tells tell over past. Because how can you move forward if you do not know where you have come from? <clears throat> Importance of Rizal's annotation. Up until now, Rizal's annotation of Morga's book is very, very important to historians. Uh, it served to awaken in the Filipinos the consciousness of our past, devote ourselves to studying the future, shatter the myth of the so-called indolence of the Filipinos, which uh, Rizal wrote a very long essay entitled The Indolence of the Filipino People, shattering the myth that we, we as a Filipinos are born indolent. And we will discuss that one also. And prove that the Filipinos have a culture of their own prior to colonization, and Filipinos were not inferior to the white man. To embrace the generic term Indio, or in today's case, the Filipino with all its negative connotations, turn it into one of dignity and nobility. Now, question. Now, I have one question for you, and I will give you five minutes to answer this one. So given that that was the objective of Rizal for the for his people, now why do you think it was very important for Rizal personally to go on to this, to, to, to do this, not to really uh, uh, push himself to go towards this uh, quest of discovering the Filipino past? So why was it very important to Rizal? So if you review, if you review what was in module two, you, you try to come uh, analyze why was this very important to Jose Rizal, and what point of his life has influenced him to really, really push him to really uh, uh, go through this very long and hard quest? And he was the only one doing it back then. You must know, no. So I will give you five minutes. Claro Bang question. So is the question really clear? Hello? Because I will be. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes sir. Yes, sir. Claro, sir. So I, I, I will give you five minutes to answer that and I will randomly call people again for oral recitation. So. Review, you know, the life of a Rizal. So uh, that was his objective for the people. Now, what about to him? Now, why why was it important to him? So I'll give you five minutes. Be back. <laughs>
Okay, if anyone wants to, wants to volunteer, please answer directly. If I am a volunteer, I will just call people. Let you know volunteer, sir. Okay. Uh no, I was gonna find. I will call people with letter T on their names. Sir, sir, sir. Yes. Nine answer that. Sa chat? Oh, na yung answer sa chat. Incomplete man. <laughs> okay, I, I, just go back if you have fully constructed your answer already. So, uh, how about Letter T, no? That one, did it? Tumawis. Tumawis, are you there? If you cannot... Okay, chat lang. Sige. Waiting. And next to you would be Tangur. Please prepare your answer, Mr. Tangur. <clears throat> because his intention is, is actually based upon his experiences in life. And this is where the biography comes in. Okay. I will be posting another module now, another module. And uh, please read the essay I gave you because I will be posting another quiz on that today if the internet won't be sir yes sir, na, na koy, na koy question sir ba sa isa mangod sir katong imong gipost ba tong rotten rotten beef and stinking fish kato ba ah uh, yeah. okay giingon mangod giingon mangod dito sir nga kanang yet to be proven pa daw ang claim na Rizal nga Kanang ang kan I met the art of metallurgy and kanang canons with us, sir. Ah uh, yes, ah uh, it's called foundry. Now uh, the the art of creating can canons is foundry. Ah, uh, one thing that makes it very suspicious is again, that we only have a few evidences on that, and there was only one known blacksmith, Pandai Pera, and uh, we don't even know if he actually exists. People are just saying Kinsasya. So we don't have evidences. And the theory is that it was not built here. It was bought from somewhere in Indonesia or Malaysia because Raha Sulaiman and, and the other Rahas back then had strong contacts with our Southeast Asian neighbors. Like in Brunei, in 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 Malaysia, so they 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 have a a matrix of trading back then. One can even say that they were actually more Malay than uh, the native of the Filipinos. So that that that, that is one question, and yes, uh, it is yet to be ascertained. But yes, but this is the claim of Jose Rizal. No? So. Uh, 
we, we haven't disproven it yet because we are still looking for evidences on that. Again, uh, this is the struggle of this Philippine history class. We still have a lot to really correct and a lot to really discover because we are still hostage to what sources are available to us right now. And if one source would come out and then we would then reinterpret everything, so it's another very daunting task. So yes, uh, making history is not, it's not an easy job. Philippine history is not an easy job. That's why you, you must be very suspicious of the social media putting out mm, history at there and then without no proper referencing to what was his or her sources are and that's not history because history is the groundwork of, of writing what is his references their their sources and where did they come up with that because it's always changing the narratives <laughs> so you must be careful of that so when you encounter um a post or, or anything you have read as, as and they say it's a historical fact you look for their sources where did they come up with that huh? <laughs> say for example the famous code of galanchao it uh, in, the, in 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 marco's time i forgot the name of this historian he claimed that he discovered a writings a right a law that was written back then in 13th century a written law because it was widely known that we had no written law up until now it's still uh the the, the well accepted fact we have no written law our laws was passed down by through generations through verbally you know uh the knowledge was passed on verbally from the elders to the next generation <coughs> so a lot i a lot i database yeah back then it was just the memory of for example if if this case is is the same with the past and they would ask the elders how did they how were they able to solve this kind of problem unlike now we have digested cases in the supreme court where you just pick up and then uh look for precedent pre precedence and how what was the ruling back then so uh, going back to that historian he he claimed that he discovered the code of kalanchao a very well written law in many chapters about a certain community back in the philippines he believed that they have right where they were writing their laws and then later on it was given a award by marcos now that and a medal of honor but later on uh decades after that it, it was discovered that it's actually a hoax or a fake it, it was the historian who actually wrote that so grab it you know so we, we have to be very careful on, 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 on the history that we encounter. So this sir, is result. Oh, sir, okay, okay. In include atong code of Kalantiao ang trial by ordeal. Ah, uh, no, naagya po ang specific ng mga trials yun. But the trial by ordeal was never written unti may tabo. Because again, it's passed down orally. How did we know that that was happening? We, we 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 interviewed people who are still alive and what were they doing back then and how uh for example one community can be different in their trial to the other like one community like for example theft now this community deals it differently now like their ordeal would be uh siguro one tribe i've heard is uh magpakulo sila too big and then and when it reached the boiling point, now the, the thief would have to put his hands, dip his hands on the whole cauldron or caldero, gabukal bukal. And if the the hands will not be burned, probably second degree or third degree, he is innocent of his crime. In ang mga trials ba? Or padon sa tabukid, he will go to this mountain and he would live there for one week without food. And if he survives, then he is innocent. Those are the kind of trials that they face or ordeals to prove their innocence and things like that. So these are traditional practices, which I, I for me, not, not, not necessarily it need, needs to be written because it can be practiced. It can be passed down or, or your parents would tell, their, their, their elders would tell that this is how we solve this kind of problem. 
this is how we we solve this conflict, things like that. So we really cannot dispute Jose Rizal also because we don't have the facts to dispute him. Okay, asa na mag-answer ninyo? Hello? How about the Ginotas? Sige, post na. Ay na, pag-ulat sa iyong classmate. Uh, the next Jose Rizal work that we're going to discover are his essays. And, and, you, and now you would, in first time, probably would actually read Rizal's essays. And yes, Grabi Musulat Jose Rizal. He's a very good writer. And Probably my encounter worse there. Just just bring a dictionary with you. Well that again one, sir. Okay, okay. Sir. No, sir. No. Okay. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Can you hear me sir? Come on, this photo, sir. Sige, sige. So, sorry sir, kaya nasira yung keyboard ko. Sa opinion ko sir, kaya ko ay para lang sa akin, hindi ako sure. Dahil kasi sir, naka-experience po siya nung mga, yung direct na harm siya. Tulad nung instance na situation nung college po siya sa Santo Tomas University. Nung... May nang uh, hinarm siya ng isang Spanish official po dahil po sa hindi lang po siya nakita at hindi daw nagsalit si Rizal. Where in that time kasi is gabi po. So parang ayaw po niyang maranasan ulit yung mga ganun or maranasan ng mga kababayan niya or sa mga future generations yung mga naranasan po nila. Yun. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, uh, the word you're looking for there is discrimination. Actually, yes. Uh, throughout his entire life, uh, just like any other Indian or, or native back then, who are, who who was not born a Spaniard, you, you get to be discriminated always. And discrimination was one thing that really hurt to Serizal growing up. And he went through a lot of it through his schooling and 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 even his, his everyday strolling not the duck pancha so uh he, he begin began what was the root root of this discrimination no what was the the start why why were people discriminating them and what makes them different from those who discriminated them so these are questions that really uh, somehow made us a little curious about society, Philippine society, and it really bothered him growing up as a young adolescent. But of course, he was growing up; he became insecure of the his fellow classmates who were Spaniards, who were rich, and who were privileged than him, and it really made him question. Uh, the consequences why is it like that so uh, he he discovered that uh, the people who are deprived of their what would be called the basic human rights right now which at, at that time uh, wala pa wala pa gi declare sa un there was no concept of that yet in the philippines but he believed that he said that uh, he somehow believed that the people who were deprived of and discriminated were more of a victim rather than a role that they have to play. Because back then, the, 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 the Filipino Indian perceived that, okay, ganito na talaga tayo, we are always inferior and we... we we are colonized, so we have to really follow them, and then they are the they are the ones who 
build the system and then and and they, they don't have any identity on their own most of them wants to be spaniards so when rizal growing up he really questioned this kind of assumptions now uh, and, 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 and he really tried to to answer them and experience them now so one of it is why why do they discriminate so he found out that they, they have this general assumption also that the white people are more superior than the the dark-skinned people thus they they have the they, they have the justification to discriminate us because again there's a, the general assumption also that we owe our civilization to them thus we have to just follow them because they they bring us to what we what would be called the civilization so the, these are the general assumptions so imagine growing up in an environment like that and then you are an indio it is very difficult for them uh even difficult for the result who was actually a, a privileged person he was born with privileges but nonetheless he was not excused or exempted from discrimination back then so growing up he was influenced by this and he he really he really tried to uh to call this break these assumptions because he felt that not only as a personal uh personal advocacy but he saw that a lot of his people and he and and based on everyday experience now he saw that a lot of the people who who are the same of who are the same with him no who are not spaniards or what would be considered the other uh it's has been treated unfairly now unfairly because once you are born like this ganito na kat na ba talaga kayo na once you're born like this are you really are you really destined to be a slave just because you are born an indio so those are general assumptions that he questioned and then his travels to europe really great uh somehow became very helpful in 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 answering those because yeah, but it, it was still a struggle uh, if you must know that when he traveled to europe a lot of people he encountered would question him now would inquire him uh, asking him uh, of his nationality right? it, it, uh, for example in, in this in his travel to the mediterranean sea he was uh, on board this tourist na, na, na ship and then he, he encountered americans and the americans the couple americans asked him what was his nationality because people think that he is chinese japanese and other asian nomenclature and it it really was difficult to say result to answer that one listen guys a young apart but because number one he cannot claim that he is actually filipino no uh the 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 term filipino back then was absent in the minds of the native indians because they cannot call themselves filipino because that title is held by the spaniards filipinos back then are the spaniards born in the philippines or even half spaniards born in the philippines they're called filipinos they can call us as filipinos but if you're not that then you are just a mere indio so on some ito bag na lisod po he would answer indio that would be more confusing the, the 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 foreigners don't even know where the philippines is and they don't even know what is a filipino then you would say you're an indio so most of the time rizal would claim as he's actually chinese and japanese and then eventually in spain he started accepting the term indio started embodying the india because he he want in growing up he wanted to be a spaniard but he cannot be a spaniard because the philippine society is very strict that if you are this and this and that so when he grew up he wanted to be a spaniard so he was always insecure but when he became an adult he already accepted it and he tried now that this is became his personal vendetta against the spaniards he would try now to 
really prove that despite being an Indio, he is also com more capable, as capable as the Spaniards. So that this became his own personal uh, fight. Uh, aside from the the fight for the Filipino people, it's also become his personal fight. Also, because growing up, he really wanted to establish who himself is uh, was, and then what was their identity. So they were proud of themselves calling Indios. Then they called them themselves as the Indio Bravos, a, a, the group of Filipino natives who were studying in in Spain. So it all started there, and then. And then um, Rizal realized kulang pagyad, na kulang pagyad. He had to really know what were the, what was their identity before the Spaniards came, and that is why when he the time he really uh, skipped schooling, he did not finish his schooling. By the way, this is not kulang niya, and I hope you would not follow Sir Rizal's footsteps on that one. He did. He went to Britain and looked for references on the Filipino past. Now, nilo pa may Google sa ona, lapay library ng Filipiniana section. So, what was refer? What was the references back then is really scattered all over the world. So he had to really look for them no? because he really wants to fight against this discrimination that he felt, and he really want to establish that. Ganito kami, no? We are not inferior to you. So that that became his personal vendetta also aside from his, yeah, the social stigma that he the, he experienced growing up. It can be very traumatic, no? Yeah, so in, instilling the people's mindset, the correct perceptions of themselves, right? Because most of his fellow countrymen grew up with this insecurity also, and he knows that. No? And he wants to correct that one. So you have, do you have any questions? Please read the essay that I gave you, and I will be posting a quiz later, or later today. Uh, also, 500-word essay. Do you believe that we had a civilization back then? Yes or no? So if yes. Sir, when ang deadline sa essay, sir? Next week. Next week. Monday. Sir, Monday. Monday. Sir, sir email or gapon, sir, or submission? Ah? Huh? Email gapon, sir, na ay submission. Email lang gapon. Sige, sir. Thank you, sir. Late, sir, what if, sir? Late na ba ang nakabutang sa... Ay, wala na ko na submit magod sa Moodle, sir, ba? Sa Moodle. Then, ano siya nga? Pas June na to, sir. Saan mo to, sir? Dili na to ma-record, sir. Email. Isan ako sa email. Email, email lang oh, sa mo. Oh, oh nasend ako uh, email, sir. Actually, ga, hinahinay pa po kong learn ang Moodle because it's very uh, very complicated ang interface po niya. Di ko kasabot. So, uh, the Moodle will just be the posting of instructions but the submissions would be through email. So, sir, did you have record si mga sir? Nga late to siya, sir. Kay di, ah, late, late. Late. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? Yes, Dilig is a user-friendly. Samot na sa editing apart. Samot na. Mag-edit ni. Di may kasabot. Hey, they, they're still developing right now, man. And we are still the guinea pigs of mole. Experimental kwan ba siya? Pace. Do you have any questions in particular about the, the pacing? We only have half of the month left. I hope we can cover everything up. I, I don't want to rush also because I know that you have a lot you are you have a lot on your plate right now. And probably the other your other classes are too demanding so uh yes i understand your struggles also and if you have problems please tell me ahead of time like for example you cannot attend this class please just uh send me your excuse i am recording everything do you have any questions 
So if you don't have any questions, we only have five minutes left. Can you show yourself for picture taking for documentation? Hello? Sige, sir. Sige, sir. Sige, sir. Sige, sir. Okay. Isa Roman. Okay. Sige, wala na gisa ka camera. See you next meeting. Thank you, sir. Good Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will post the link. Thursday, I'll get it. Thank you, thank you.